My name is Steven Ochoa Ocheng. I played for for Thika United since 03 to 08 when I was enlisted in the military. I joined Ulinzi in 09. Unfortunately, I came during the mid-season, so I could not uh, get a chance to play in 09. But uh, in 2010, I was integrated into the team. The same year we won the league. I was the captain by then. So I thank, uh, I thank Sami Simeon, Alfredo Good, for what they did. They really assembled a very good team, all round, depth, all the quality you needed for a team to win a league. Sami Simeon did a great job to assemble that team. My father, I would say, played a very great role. He used to organize inter, inter estates or rather inter villages for us. Uh, I remember, we were the only family that had uh, this modern football. So, uh, it gave us an advantage. I felt like we are, we are way better than others. So, this is something that really motivated us. My brother and I took advantage of that. We sharpened our skills when we had free time and uh, played with even our dad when he had uh, that time over the weekend. I remember he used to play full back three. To date, he still plays for some team in Kisumu. Two, when my brother was playing for poster, Fika, I remember my dad and I used to go to the stadium, sit over there and watch him play. This is something that really motivated me. I could feel maybe I also want someday my dad to sit somewhere and watch me play. So it gave me that uh, edge to, to like uh, work harder so that maybe people can also watch me. So having my brother older than me playing in the Premier League is something that really pushed me. I would say that is one thing also that uh, pushed me to come to Leeds. That urge to play with your brother in the same team. And I'm happy to have a play in the, in the same team with him. Vincent was tremendous. If, if there was a striker, I feel uh, maybe did not uh, get the full opportunity to express himself, it's him. Sika United had great plans for me. I remember the chairman back then, Elio Loli, uh, had plans to take me abroad. But uh, I think it took too much time and opportunities were coming my way. I had to make this decision, but I cannot, I cannot uh, say that I'm regretting because even what I've achieved with Lindsay is much greater maybe. You never know. I wouldn't have achieved that with Thika. During my time at Thika, I gave them my best. I gave them my best. I came, gave Lindsay my best. There, there we are. The time I decided to leave uh, Thika United was very painful because uh, Thika United um, took me through my education. They paid my fees. I felt maybe I had not given them enough though. Or times comes when you have to make tough decisions. So this is one of the times I felt I was very low. But now we have to take opportunities that come our way. And then I remember sometime we lost one of our youth players. His name was Mavius Melissa the son of Senior Sergeant Malisa, who was uh, my team manager back when I was playing for DOD Cow. This boy to me was uh, an upcoming player who would have gone places. I remember we lost him one week to a very crucial match. I remember we were playing with uh, AFC that time. We had this big match and uh, his burial was uh, a day before that match. I dedicated that match to him because we eventually won. Well, I know a lot of people think I could have played longer, but uh, I had this knee injury that was really, really nagging, and uh, I felt I was not doing justice to my body. Therefore, I sat down, thought about it, discussed it with my family, my wife, I consulted, and then when I was coming up with this decision, I, I was very sober and I knew this was the time, as much as maybe. I also felt I could have give, given more, but uh, of course, with, with an injury, you could not 
it could not be quite efficient but i'm glad i'm glad there was nothing else or rather there was nothing left that i could have done better than what i did before there are also upcoming players that we needed to give them room there was chachi moloma and i felt these were players that needed that time to express themselves and that was the right time i thought so i cannot regret the only thing maybe i can say is i'm sad i'm sad my daughter didn't have to time to see me play uh, something that i always felt it all would have been a good thing that is maybe the only bit that but still she was very young so it's okay it's okay i saw ibrahim shambi play for the ulinzi youth in uh, the under 19 tournament the boy was very impressive very impressive and I saw he had qualities more the same like the ones I had. Eventually he joined us as a civilian, he, he was employed. And then when I was hanging my boots, I felt uh, I need to hand this jersey to someone that can give maybe what I was giving or someone who has kind of almost the same kind of play like me. And I felt because this someone we were close with. Shambi is a good friend of mine to date. We talk a lot. He consults a lot of things. And I'm happy he's doing a good job at Ulinzi. He's really doing a good job. And very soon, trust you me, very soon, Shambi will be a big name. Ulinzi played a big role to make me who I am today. I cannot just go and say, no, I'm done with Ulinzi. I'll be lying to myself. That team lifted me up that team gave me a name and therefore i feel it's good every other time if i have the opportunity i come back to the team talk to the boys uh, motivate them in any way that i can because this is our team and we have to take it where it should be so having time to talk to akina wamalo shambi jojo Mundi, these are still young boys uh, the other day you saw Wamalo was at uh, his best and I felt it was time maybe to show him that yes, you can do this, you can do this more. That's why maybe I came up with a, uh, a pair of boots. That is one pair that I kept. It was uh, something I had an attachment to and I felt now that this guy is doing a great job, maybe I should hand him this eh, to, motiv to motivate him more and push him, make him do wonders, you know. Jojo Mondi is a young player a defender that uh, trust you me everything would want to happen he's coming up so well and uh, soon he's going to establish himself of course i'll start from the top we won the premier league in 2010 uh, being part of that team was one of the greatest things and uh, i was voted the runners up player of the year same year same midfielder of the year same year Next year we won uh, the top eight, the inaugural top eight, and uh, we've won a number of uh, EAC military games, a number of them. I can't remember the number, but I know year in, year out with us in the team we used to win. It's only one time that we came, became runners up back in Burundi. I remember there was this field in Mohoroni, pathetic pitch, if I may say. The officiating there was different. The pitch is an opponent, you had the hostile fans, and then the referees had kind of had a fixed mind. Though, though we also always had a way to come up uh, with a point or even victorious. But that was the pitch that every time we were going there, it was like, oof, oof, no. There is one opponent that gave me a tough time during my play in the youth, Hilary Chesa. You could not know what he wanted to do. He was very mobile, a lot of experience, so he gave me a lot of difficulties. He's one player I still feel gave me a lot of headache. Apul and I, he used to play uh, in the same position, maybe same roles in the team and uh, good thing we were friends we were friends we could even have a meeting by ourselves the two of us 
like uh, Steve Ayapul, what are we going to do to make sure we win this match this weekend? Whom are we facing this weekend? How are we going to marshal that midfield? So that relationship, I think, uh, was very important, being friends and uh, having that understanding that uh, we are here for one goal, as much as we are playing in the same position. Uh, we always had that kind of, like I'm saying, that kind of a rivalry, a positive one, that uh, at, at one time, one of us has to be in that pitch. And I remember one of our uh, bosses at, at some point said, no, 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 no. You cannot say line one player of the two because maybe they are playing the same role. Is there a way that you can incorporate the two of them and they perform? And that is how we ended up being partners in that midfield. And trust me, we created a wall. We built a wall that uh, was not permeable. Uh, we could sit down and think, uh, if this guy is at uh, his top, uh, he's going to create havoc against us so how we could tackle him how we could make him lose concentration and all that was what we really worked on. so if I can give an example Kahata or Paul Were uh, they were instrumental figures in their teams back then therefore having been midfield players of course at one point or another we will come into contact with them. And trust me, we really dealt with them. Dealt with them properly. I think Koki was provoked. He was provoked. But then I think the referees were harsh in making that decision because I didn't see Koki punching him or headbutting him as uh, they claimed. So Koki had to be dead carded and we had to do a replacement immediately. Of course, that one messed with the game plan a little bit, but of course, it was part of the game too. You know, at the end of the day, you have to win a match. By all means, you have to win the match, either on the pitch or anywhere else. At the end of the day, we need the three points. And therefore, intimidation was part, part of uh, our secret weapon, right from the tunnels, we could uh, intimidate, the, intimidate the opponents. We had the mass, the physique, we took advantage of that. I was the quiet one among us, uh, Koki and uh, Apul, but I trust you me, the things that the opponents were being told, <laughs> yeah, unless you have a stronger character, you cannot play against those people. I normally used to be the last to leave because uh, in most cases, I used to talk to my wife. I make a call to my wife and tell them, tell her that I'm, we are here and uh, we are about to kick off. So keep me in prayer. Trust you, me prayers also work. Having that conversation with her really used to give me motivation. I remember my brother was one of the soloists. We had Lavi, a Koki also used to sing, and then Matanguta himself used to sing. But we had the top number one soloist, his name was um, Apollo, this town fan who could come to our camp. By one, we were singing. I mean, we were getting rid of the tension and all that. So Apollo, wherever he is, Apollo did a great job. In all the teams that I've played for, I've been a captain right from our youth team, Thika United, Ulinzi, and now the national team. But trust you me, leading the national team comes with a lot of, uh, a lot of expectation. People need to see a figure that represents the country. So it's not an easy thing to lead the nation, trust to me. You have to be almost perfect, if not perfect. You have to be different from every other person. I remember goes to Mule naming me as the team captain to represent the team uh, Zakafa 2010. And I was at my best. My fitness level, mind status, I think I was prepared. 100% I was prepared. So we played the first match. The second match I remember we were playing against Ethiopia. That is where I got an injury to my muscle. And this one, I think this one also was uh, part of my lowest moments 
because I knew now this is when I need to make a mark. I need to represent my country. Now this is the, the level that I, I, I am supposed to be. And then all of a sudden, unfortunately, that injury. When we went back to camp, um, Zedi came to my room, Ghost later came to my room. They asked me how I was. The dog Makanga came, but I could not give anything more than that. I can mention three players that really motivated me. Nicholas Miotti, and there was Anthony Mathenge of Sika United then. But in Ulinzi, I had a bond with Eric Apul. Apul could talk to me, I could talk to him. Either I'm playing or not, whether he's on the pitch or not, we could even sit down after the match and evaluate and say, Ocho, you did this, you should have done this. Apul, you did this. Should have done this. He was more of a mentor as much as we are age mates, I can say. Joseph Yambo, he was really slow, really slow. But trust me, he was very tough. He had that ability to study and win the game. As much as he was slow, he was very good in making decisions and all that. I played with my brother, Vincent Onyango. The striker was fast. My brother was really fast. Really fast. And the funniest, Chester Okoyo. Chester could make jokes even in the middle of the night. You know, basically he spent most of the time together. And then from his bed you could hear him cracking jokes over maybe Lavi or Brian Kaka. And he was one of the funniest players I ever played with. I'm a certified uh, KFC license holder and uh, I'm glad I had that uh, short period maybe to coach Lindsay per se when I was the team manager and um, it's good to be a coach but um, I, I want to urge uh, players, I want to urge players to even take uh, other, other roles. Don't, don't always want to be the coach, there are so many things you can do around football, you know, don't narrow down to coaches because now everyone, everyone wants to be a coach, everyone wants to be a coach after maybe playing football, no, not everyone can be a coach, you can be a physical trainer, you can be a journalist, you can do full nutrition and then come back to advise the team on what they should do in terms of feeding and all that, there are so many things, you can take up the team manager's role. You know, don't narrow down. You, otherwise, if you narrow down into coaching, you'll be limiting yourself. If, for instance, I can give you an example, we are so many players in Lindsay, former players. Everyone wants to be a coach. Which which teams will you coach? You know, we only have Lindsay in the military, apart from maybe the teams from the, in the units. But now everyone wants to be at the top. See, it's a competition. Yes, it's good. We are many, but now you will be limiting yourself. Expand your horizon. Try and look for something else that will make relevance, you know? After coming back to my unit, of course, we have uh, this team, Waterworks. It represents the DOD in the inter -biggers. So the last uh, event we had was in Nakuru. I was privileged to be among the technical bench and uh, we did a good job. We won the CDF Cup, which is a good thing. At least I found somewhere maybe to practice what I learned back then. Besides that, I have something for schools. I coach schools, so there are a few things I'm doing with them to, to, to not to be idle or to have that knowledge. Keep going, you know, football is a continuity. It changes every day. So if you, you're not active, then trust you me, you'll be left behind. Coming back to South Orleans will be one of my greatest uh, dream come true because I believe there is still work that I did not finish with Orleans, So. Maybe in the later years, if God has planned for me, and maybe if I progress in my coaching career, trust you me, I believe at some point I'll come back uh, to be amongst those in that technical range. I like free style of football. I'm more of a tactical coach. Between the sticks, I'll have Francis Oniso, and then I'll do uh, three. 
4360. So I'll have Cookie, Mulingi, and Jojo Mondi on my back line. Brian Bilgen will, will play on my right. Apul, uh, Ibrahim Ishmael. Ibrahim Ishmael is one player that uh, got injured way back, I think, in 2013, there about who was who was a marvelous to watch. I'll have Chester, and then Amoka, Vincent Onyango, and Lavio you Wino know, as my forwards. These are strikers that will do will give defenders a sleeplessness. This ones will not let you rest. Lavi one on one is awesome. Vincent with the speed, Amoka with the energy. So having these ones with a pool giving the defense a backup. Brian Bilgren having that flow, just uh, the ability to take one on one, and then Ishmael will do that for me. I want to give it a different approach. I wouldn't call the fans to come to the stadium. You perform, these people will come. Give your best, win matches, give your best, play the best you can. These people will always come. You won't need to go advertise, oh, we have this, we have this. No. Hit a team, 4-0, 2-1, you know, at the end of the day, everyone will, will want to see Ulinz is performing, what are they doing? Everyone will come to the stadium. You know, when you want to beat your opponent, you need to know his strong points, his weak points, and all that. I feel if players can get that time, can sacrifice a little bit, and study what their opponents do, you'll perform well. And that is one thing that helped me uh, command in the midfield. want to advise our coaches, the current crop. Uh, you need to understand your players. I remember there was a time I was going through a tough time. The media had tarnished my name in regards to my family. But I had uh, these supportive uh, seniors. I won't forget to mention my brigadier Mikai, Kanawalo, and uh, Major Dr. Kennedy Kithomi of Navy, these people came in handy. They could have sessions with me, talk to me, and tell me this is for life, you know. And I'm grateful I came out strong with courage and grace, and I managed to play amidst all those uh, challenges. And therefore, I wish if coaches or the management can understand that these players have uh, their family away from football, and they could be having challenges out there, so they could know how to handle them. How they, does this? How, how can they make this uh, practical? Having a one-on-one -on -one, uh, uh, conversation with uh, your players, trust you me, these players will come to you. They'll open up. They'll tell you these are the challenges they are going through. And uh, at some point, let me tell you, you'll know how to. Otherwise, a player can come to the pitch, he's not maybe in his right state of mind, and then they are pushing him and all that. Believe me, he'll not give you results. 